Welcome to Ladies Talking Leafs. I'm Chris. And I'm Syl. And welcome to our sixth season of Ladies Talking Leafs. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you, our followers, uh, listeners, um, and the great guests that we've had who have taken the time to come on our show. So just going to mention a few new social media followers, um, Matt Robinson, who shared our show on X and made the comment about our anniversary episode, saying that it's a show featuring smart, non-hyperbolic leaf talk and easy recommendation. So thank you. So I love that comment. Non-hyperbolic. <laughs> yes. And also thank you to our Facebook followers. We have a 50-50 split there, actually, of women and men following us. So let's go, ladies. Come on. Yes. We need Come more on, ladies. ladies. You gotta, you mm -hmm. gotta push, you gotta push that follow subscribe button on YouTube, mm -hmm. Spotify, Apple, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to get, cause we know there's a lot of ladies out there that love the leaves. Mm -hmm. All right. So we also want to thank TSN analyst Craig Button, who said on X that he loves our passion. And personally, I think it was Sill's passion there, but uh, we've, we both try and bring the passion mm -hmm. every show. Uh, we'll be bringing more Leaves Passion this season. So again, hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to us and you won't miss an episode. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube and watch the show and see video content from games that we attend at Scotiabank Arena. We can't wait to get there. Absolutely. So we know it's very early to be checking the odds for the Stanley Cup champion, but if you go to betonline.ag, it's interesting to note that the New Jersey Devils are at plus 1,000 odds to win the Stanley Cup. So I think like they're sitting third right now on Bet Online. Uh, the Leafs, Carolina Hurricanes, New York Rangers, Vegas Golden Knights are all at plus 1,400. So interesting. Who is coaching the New Jersey Devils? Yeah. And hmm. of course. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. he's he's actually not going to have one of his top defensemen there. Luke Hughes is out for the mm -hmm. quite a while, so we'll see what happens. But um, Bet Online is obviously it's not only about the NHL, but they cover all the major leagues and the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Yes, NFL. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of that $200,000 prize. So when the game's over, you can head on over to our online casino and get in on game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of over 150 slots games. Head to the website bet betonline.ag today to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Please gamble responsibly, though, or if you or someone you know needs support or advice, reach out to Connex Ontario or an organization near you. Place your limits and stay within it. Okay, so fans may have heard uh, that former Leaf captain Matt Sundin is going to be here in Toronto promoting his new book, Home and Away. Um, it's available for pre-order now, and he's going to be touring around the province to promote the new book. I just think it's hilarious that it's like, of course, he has to come here to promote it, right? Like, where else is he well, going to go? This is where the Leaf fans are. And yeah. he has a lot of people that do love him and loved him as a captain. Um, you know, for, for many Leaf fans, he's their hero. So, yeah, uh, of course, this, this would be, you know, where he would come to promote it. Uh, I, yeah. for one, I think this will be another good one for us to read and maybe do a review on. Um, for, oh, for sure. on the, on our website yeah. blog. Um, I would like to know about that game when he, when, when Wendell came back and he scored mm -hmm. the goal and he banged, like he went against the glass. Like if he actually like describes anything of his feeling, um, to actually yeah. score that goal. Or I'm to interested win. to, to hear, you know, his insights, you know, things that at the time he may not have been able to, didn't feel like he could, you know, say or put out there. Um, yeah, a little bit. His, he's a very, you know, um, stoic kind of guy. So hard to know what he was thinking or feeling in mm -hmm. certain moments, except for that one that you yes. just mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested in, to, um, read that book and, and, and get yeah, a little bit more. And he's also going to be doing like, he's having quite the events, actually. He's having a big event at the Hockey Hall of Fame with Steve, Steve Dangle, and you mm. buy tickets for mm -hmm. it. 
and wow. so fan, fans will have the opportunity to to go and ask questions and um there's no photos apparently um but mm-hmm. he'll like sign he'll sign the book for the person and then he'll sign one piece of memorabilia and that's it but uh but yeah no it's something to look forward to all right so let's get on to the show then and uh we're going to be prepping for puck drop with a uh, leafs preseason q a and then for our third period segment, we are welcoming back our Ladies Talking Leafs insider, Micah Jello, to the show. So without any further ado, let's talk Leafs. All right. So the ladies are prepping for puck drop. Yes, mm-hmm. we can't wait for it. And so we're just going to do a few question and answer type things, Q&A thing to see uh, see what we each have in in, in mind for this, uh, for this upcoming, well, mostly for training camp now Mm -hmm. so so other than easton cowan and fraser minton who are you most excited to watch going into this leafs training camp well i think uh i am excited to finally see more of topi nimala right um i think he's gonna get a a nice long look in training camp and um that nikita grabong breg Grebonk Yonkin, Greb Yonkin. I don't. Yeah. Know. I'm gonna have to. I think we will have to learn how to how to say his name properly because, yes. by all accounts, we've heard that name mentioned in various different places. Um, he seems like a guy who's who's got NHL games, NHL skills. So uh, he's another one that I'm going to be looking forward to watching. What about you? So for me, it's um, actually I just. He just kind of came in as the, uh, like in, in this game one of the rookie camp that, uh, that went on Saturday is this Noah Chadwick. He's a mm. defenseman as well. And it's, um, it's funny because they may have found somebody that's a, a steal, basically, is what they're saying, because he was drafted in the sixth round in 2023. He's a left shot defenseman and he's, uh, but he's six foot four. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, I'm looking more at the back end as well at defense because we don't, we, we haven't had a homegrown like defenseman in such a long time. Um, Mm -hmm. other than Morgan Riley, I guess is our, well, Lilligren's homegrown too. Yeah, I guess so. But I guess he's a little forgettable. He's a little (laughs) forgettable. Yeah. (laughs) Unfortunately for him, he's not though, but he does have, he does the things he does well, he does really well. So yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the Topi Nimala thing, and and, but this Noah Chadwick got me interested because just the fact that he is a late round pick, um, mm-hmm. like really late, and uh, apparently he's he's going to be looked at possibly for the world um, world juniors too mm-hmm. in uh, coming up in January, so for Team Canada, so that's so- uh, yeah. What about like any, like, these are all rookies that we're talking about now, but what yeah. about uh, like other guys, like actual NHL? NHLers, I'm actually, I'm interested in seeing how Willie does to start the season. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, he's got the big money now. He's getting the 11. This is the first year of the contract, right? Like 11 mm-hmm. million. Um, you know, <laughs> let's, let's see you start the way you did last year and play the same way, like you, the way you did in, uh, in, in Sweden. Going up mm-hmm. until that point, right? Like, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at that, at him a lot. And, um, I don't know if there's anybody. I mean, the goaltending is obviously a huge question mark. It's more question mm-hmm. mark. I, I don't know, but, um, yeah, I'd say Willie. What about you? Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of this, this whole Pacioretty thing. I'm curious about as to where he fits on our team. I'm, I'm just not sure of the fit. And, and I just, you know, like with, with Spezza, when he, when they brought him in, he was very, well, first of all, he was like, he was a center. So, you know, he it was just, there's so much more versatility there with Pacioretty. I, I just don't see that. And I don't know how his game will, you know, fit with, you know, playing more of like a lower, uh, bottom six role. Yeah. And, um, and That's actually, I'm worried another, about too. Yeah. With that, I mean, I think, He'll be good on the power play, like second power play, but yeah, have the limited l- limited time, like in in the game as a like on our shift by shift basis. I mm-hmm. don't know. And I'm also interested to see um, now that Domi has his his cushion, 
He's home and cooled out. He doesn't have to worry about his one year, one year, one year. I'm kind of interested to see, uh, you know, if with that more being more settled, how, um, you know, that either helps his game. I'm curious to see uh, and where, where he ends up, you know, being slotted as well. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 No, I, I'm in yeah. seeing, uh, yeah, Domi will be definitely interested to see where he ends up being, whether he ends up playing with Matthews again too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or if he ends up being at center. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just depends. I don't but. know. I'm looking forward to seeing him bring the passion. <laughs> yeah. So we talked a little bit about this already, but of the rookies, who do you see making the team? So we've got A, Easton Cowan, B, Fraser Minton, C, Topi Nimala, or D, Other. I'm actually going to go with, I want to say Nimala, but I have a feeling it's going to be none of them. Mm. <laughs> so I think it's going to be D, Other being nobody. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, the thing with, with, not knowing so much about Craig Berube and how mm-hmm. he handles rookies and that, like to say if he would have that trust in them um, to have them make the team. I mean, I think yeah. of the three, I think Nimela is probably going to get a taste of it, like in the, to start possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't have him sit, you can't have any of them sitting around, like being in the press box, one game no, here, no. one game there. Or, no or good for them. any of them. No, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I would have to say none of them are going to make it. And then, but Nibala could be, uh, because he's waiver exempt too, like he could be up and down in the, mm-hmm. during, throughout the year. Um, I'm hoping for a trade at some point, but. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see, because there's mm-hmm. a lot of different holes in the lineup, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And what about you? What, uh, which one out of, of I the. I think I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on the, on Nimala, I think. Um, I really think it's time that we see him for a longer look. You know, mm-hmm. like I, all the hype that has been surrounding him for years. Um, you know, this is a good, good time for him to start making his mark and, uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him, yeah, and I think and he could possibly make it. Yeah, and on our last show, uh, on our anniversary show too, Nick Barden, mm-hmm. our guest, he uh, he said that he's he's basically ready for for playing, mm-hmm. or showing his skills in the NHL. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes in the uh, in the um, well in this rookie camp now, and then in the in the regular camp. All right, mm-hmm. so. This one is kind of a fun question. Should number 67 be off limits to all Leaf players? <laughs> the jersey number, yes or no? My, it's absolutely no, because oh, it's, okay. it's not, it is not a player's, it's, there's no significant player that has played with that number. Uh, you it's, could see it as a good omen, <laughs> potentially, that we brought in a player who actually wears that number that maybe this is the year the curse will be broken. So as far as, as should a player wear the number, I don't, I don't think that makes a difference. It's, it's a significant year uh, for the team winning their, their last Stanley cup, but we're hopeful that, that the next last one will be 2025. Yeah. I was actually saying, I mean, I was initially, I said no as well. And mm-hmm. I'm going to stick to that because that's what I thought of as well. We're too mm-hmm. much of the same on these questions, yeah. but, but I went a little bit deeper before I came on the show and I was watching the, um, the last time somebody wore 67 mm. on the lease oh, was okay. Ro- Robert Svila. Okay. Okay. And that was in the 2002, 2003 season. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, maybe there's something good that happened there, <laughs> but of course there wasn't anything well, good. No, <laughs> we lost, we lost to Philadelphia in the first round that year. Um, yep. to the Flyers. Mm-hmm. Um, but he did s- uh, get an assist on the OT winner in game six uh, mm-hmm. that got, and it was a triple overtime too. We had to have been there. I was like, I don't yeah, remember. No, I'm pretty sure we were. We were definitely there, but it's just like, it's just so funny how we don't remember these. I remember the long overtimes at Maple Leaf Gardens probably because it was so hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like we were in like tank There's tops like and some shorts. Sensory <laughs> things that add to the memory. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah. D- anyways, Robert Spila got an assist on the OT winner in the third um, in this in the third o- OT in the and it took it to Game Seven, and of course we lost in Game Seven. So there was nothing mm-hmm. positive, really. <laughs> not that wasn't too Gary much Volk. That's not that's not Gary Volk overtime. No, that, no, it was Travis Green. Oh, okay. Actually, mm-hmm. he got Tucker. It was Tucker and mm-hmm. Svila mm-hmm. uh, to Travis Green. Yeah. Well, you know, Pacioretty is like a slightly higher profile player <laughs> than <Yeah>. Svila. So <laughs> maybe that makes a bit of a difference. I don't know. But I, I yeah. still stick to my previous statement of, of no, I think anybody... Like, you know, on obviously he's been wearing 67 on multiple different teams. It's only with the Leafs that it could be of issue. So yeah. anyway, we've got a lot more to talk about as we get ready for Leafs training camp. Uh, before we do that, a quick reminder that we'll be adding an extra episode throughout the regular season called Leafs Quick Hits by Ladies Talking Leafs. So you will find that new episode on the off week of our full length episodes. So the easiest way to not miss one is to hit that follow button wherever you listen to our your favorite uh, podcast, Apple, Spotify, or if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. So now it's time for our third period segment of the season. And we are welcoming our Ladies Talking Leafs insider, Mike Agello to the show. Okay, so the Leafs rookie camp is underway in Montreal, and in a few days, the main camp is going to get going as the team gets ready for the 107th season of Maple Leafs hockey. To get us ready for training camp and get his thoughts on the Le- what the Leafs lineup could look like as we get in get closer to opening night, we welcome our Ladies Talking Leafs insider, Mike Agello. Mike covers the Leafs and the NHL as a reporter and is a member of the Professional Hockey Writers Association. For 15 years, Mike has covered the Leafs on HockeyBuzz.com, and he is co-host of Off the Post Radio and the Leafs Convo. Mike is also the site manager for the Hockey News covering the Buffalo Sabres. As always, Mike, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. And uh, yeah, I've been covering this team. Well, I mean, it seems like 107 years, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Well, you've definitely you've been longer than 15 years, obviously, but uh, that's mm-hmm. quite the accomplishment there. So yeah, um, but let's get into it now that we're getting into a new season. And uh, we'll start, of course, with the signings of Nick Robertson uh, to a one-year deal at 875000 and Max Pacioretty to a PTO. What do you think of these uh, two? They're, they're very different moves, obviously. But uh, yeah, what do you think of them? Well, the Robertson situation, I mean, it appeared clear to me if if there was an avenue to trade him, and get equal value for him. I think that would have happened. But I looked at the situation. You know, he scored 14 goals in 56 games um, in limited ice time. Um, he's an asset. Now, you know, obviously he asked for a trade that automatically puts the team between a rock and a hard place. There was threats of a potential holdout. But I think it was probably communicated to him by his agent, Pat Brisson, that They've tried to trade you and they're not getting what they think is an equal value. So your best bet here is to sign a contract. I thought he would just accept the qualifying offer and the deal that he signed was like, oh, I think it was a one way instead of a two way. Maybe that was the, um, you know, that was the, the agreement or that was the, 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 uh, just a, uh, the situation that, uh, both sides would just agree to. So, um, I look at this and like I said, I think he's got a lot of talent. Um, Now his game is not complete and that's the problem. He defensively is not strong. He's not big and he's got at least be average defensively to be able to play where he should play in a lineup because he's got a great shot. He's really, um, I think, creative player uh and you know i think there's an offensive upside there but he can't take advantage of that unless he's not a liability in his own zone so that will be determined at training camp if he's the same nick robertson that sheldon keith saw over the last couple years then you know he's probably going to be a 13th forward and 
you know, then I, I don't know what to yeah. tell That's them. That's what I was going to say. Do you think like Sheldon, a lot of, there has been some talk like Sheldon Keefe didn't give him the opportunity, but if Sheldon Keefe didn't give him the opportunity, do you really think like, does Craig Berube have that patience with him? Like they were kind of saying like, but did guess, Berube actually speak to him and say, we're going to hundred percent give you a shot. Like that, it's so that, that means extended an extended time to to watch him like not just a few games here and there that's what it sounds like and maybe that's in the preseason because he's got to prove mm. himself i mean Sheldon keith clearly didn't trust him and i think there's reasons why he didn't trust him because defense he's you know he's not big he's five nine five ten he's you know he got stronger last year it, it, it showed in terms of the fact that he didn't get hurt but is he strong enough to um, you know, battle for pucks along the wall. That's not his game, but he's he's got to make it more of his game. And remember, I don't think he goes in the corners too much because when he does, he gets lit up like Matt Roy lit him up uh, a yeah. couple of years ago. That ended that basically ended his season. So, you know, he's compromised in terms of you know um, his ability to play that sort of two way game that a bigger, stronger player could. But the off the offensive upside is so great there and the opportunity because the left side is such an open book right now that i mean i think it behooves them to give him an opportunity and see where it goes at least early in the season do you think that if he let's just say he shows well uh, do you think that he will be trade bait like right away like if some team comes calling brad Trilliving that like he'll uh they'll listen just because of the fact he demanded that trade uh or asked for that trade Earlier. Well, I mean, the the thing is, I mean, short of him ha- like lighting it up in the preseason, scoring like eight goals, what has changed from the summer till now? It's like it, basically, it's like okay, you know, like um, if there, you know, and I don't know this for a fact, but just say this for example, if their price was a second round pick, and he scored eight goals in the preseason, does that mean that a team is going to all of a sudden move up from a third or a fourth that they were offering to a second? I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. so I think what he's got to do is he's got to make the team and he's got to prove that he can score consistently and play better to make his value, to boost his value. But at, at that, at this, and it's sort of, it was, it, um, it's sort of a catch 22 from his perspective. I, I don't think he doesn't want to play in Toronto, but he wants an opportunity. But if he performs well and starts scoring, then they're not want to going to want to get up, give up on him. They're going to well, you know, like they need secondary scoring. One of the things that this team needs besides Matthews and Neander and the lesser extent, you know, Tavares and Marner, they need secondary scoring. Mm-hmm. And if Robertson can provide them 15 to 20 goals, then they won't give up on him. Yeah. All right, and what about Max Pacioretty signing to a PTO? Were you a fan of that? Or I, I was kind of surprised that the uh, agent came out and just said like he basically has a spot in on the roster. He's gonna, like he, even though it is a PTO right now, that he's gonna get a contract uh, to start the season as a Leaf. But I they don't have know. to do their their cap massage. Yeah, <laughs> by yeah. the end of the season to figure out how much to pay. I kind of like what they did with Noah Gregor last year, right? Yeah. Right. I think that's that's what's at the heart of this. I think, oh, short of him re-injuring himself, and we don't hope we hope that doesn't happen, or him just playing terribly in the preseason. He he's got a one year deal. It's just a question of, yeah, it's not putting him between a rock and a hard place in terms of the cap. I mean, if they had signed him to a veteran minimum deal, then they'd be over the cap by seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars more than they want to be so there's some movement that has to be made and we don't know what that's going to be right now it could be it could be robertson but probably not um it could be you know i've seen um talk about connor timmons being placed on waivers or i I would find that hard to believe because he's a right-handed defenseman so you know teams would want it would at least give up a mid-round pick for a for a right-hand shot defenseman. But yeah, there's going to have to be mis- some cap massaging. Brandon Pridham is going to have to do something uh, if they're going to bring all these players in. And Hawk and Paw, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute, is another factor here. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, am I surprised? No, because it had been out there for a little while. 
Um, I think it's what I call a free swing. Even if you, even if they sign him to a veteran minimum deal, I mean, if it doesn't work out, then they either terminate the contract or send him down to the minors or he retires or whatever. I mean, you know, it's no really literally no risk. And it's like, okay, apparently he came in a month before the season. He worked out for the Leafs. They liked what they saw. And um, they said, okay, I mean, this is a guy. He's not the 30-goal scorer that he was in Vegas or Montreal. Um, maybe they're hoping that over a year out from the double, you know, the back-to-back Achilles injuries that he can bounce back and be a contributor, you know, scoring 15 goals, something like that. And if they can get that out of him and he can play, say, a third-line role, then I think it's a risk worth taking. Yeah. Yeah, I think on the on the second power play unit too that I mean yes. he could be a, a benefit there for goal scoring. I mean he was a goal scorer, so yeah. it's not like that doesn't just go away, right? It's just no. and he's a veteran, he knows how to play. But uh but yeah, and, no. And the interesting thing that uh Chris Johnston brought up on his show um a couple days ago was that the Leafs were batting around, it was either Pacioretty or they were talking to James Van Reemsdyke. And I mean, like JVR like, probably be more expensive though, wouldn't he? I, I don't know. Maybe expensive, but we know what JVR's problem is. JVR, when they walked away from him and let him go to free agency, he was slowing down then. And we mm-hmm. saw in, um, in Boston that he was not the player that he was a few years ago. So, you know, there were, I mean, the only difference in terms of the two situations was, you know, Pacioretty, um is limited by his uh, speed because of an injury. Uh, Van Riemsdyk is limited with his speed because of age, because of just he's slowing down. So I think they think that there's a higher upside there with Pacioretty, and that's why they went in that direction. Okay, so before we came on here, we were chatting a little bit about uh, rookie camp that is going on right now. So mm-hmm. uh, we know that you've been watching some of the games. So from what you've seen, um, is like, are any of the Leaf uh, rookies that you've watched uh, so far this weekend, do any of them legitimately have a shot uh, to be in the opening day lineup or sticking with the big club that you've seen? I think it's limited to two, and that's the two that we, I think everybody, you yeah. know, knows <laughs> Fraser Minton and Easton Cowan. Um, I have been, at least in the first game, I've been sort of watching the second game with one eye and doing another thing with another. Um, it, Topi Nimala is somebody that I think because he's right-handed, because he's a good skater, because he's got some offensive tools, and because he played pretty well in a rookie, his rookie season with the Marlies, I think he's in the mix here. But I, um, but I think that with the addition of Hawk and Pa, um, you know, they have eight defensemen now. If they, if they, that's win, where a deal a deal might come in, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like yeah, if you if you wave. If you waived Connor Timmons and you're clearing a million one, okay, I mean that clears a, enough salary to pay for Pacioretty and part of somebody else. But with a guy like Nimala, and this goes for the other ones too, they can't be up on the NHL roster and not play. It makes no sense. So like now, Minton and Nimala are waiver exempt and they can go down to the Marlies. And I think that if Minton doesn't make the team that he's going to play a lot, he's going to play in a big sort of top six role with the Marlies. Um, Nemo will probably be on their top pairing. Whereas in Toronto, you know, he's probably going to be a third, fourth liner uh, with the Leafs, meaning Minton and Nemo will probably be bottom pairing. And if they're not playing, they should be with the Marlies with Cowan. We know it's the same situation, which I think, sucks and i hate it you know the nhl should do something about it you know it's a bad rule it's a a terrible rule but you know it's like oh it's to preserve the chl you know what screw the chl they can they're making money hand over fist if it's one if it's one player per team per year it's not going to break them you know the london knights are not going to be not profitable if eastern Cowan is not there they're a money-making machine i'd like to make the money that they make thank you very much (laughs) <laughs> um, so, but, but the problem is, is Cowan, 
is 19 years old. His birthday is not before December 31st. Um, so he will be 19 at the, so I mean, he qualifies for the world juniors and if he qualifies, qualifies for the world juniors, he doesn't qualify to play in the American hockey league. And I think the American hockey league would be perfect for where he needs to go because I don't know if there's enough of a challenge for Easton Cowan in the OHL after winning MVP and playoff MVP and playing in the world junior and playing in the Memorial cup. I mean, I don't know. You know, you could say he can get stronger and that that will be positive. But I get the feeling and this is just, you know, this depends on how he plays. And he scored a goal in the first uh, rookie tournament game. If he plays well, as well as he did uh, in the preseason last year and he earned a couple extra games, then he's probably going to be one of those like Shane Wright type of situations where he plays nine games. Um, they may stretch out the nine games over a longer period of time, maybe even a month or two. And then they send him to the World Juniors in December. Uh, and then, then he goes back to the Ontario Ontario Hockey League. But I don't know how beneficial that is to, the, to him. It'll be it's like burning just... a year of development, really. It's like, yeah. Although you could say, well, is he going to learn more? at the side of, you know, John Tavares and Austin Matthews and practicing with NHL players for nine games. Yes. Or for yeah. that, that period. Yeah. I yeah. Mean. I mean, you know, that probably they're going to spot him and I mean, is it going to be, do him any good to play with Ryan Reeves? I don't know that Ryan Reeves will be in the lineup, yeah. but <laughs> I don't think it does anybody any good to play with Ryan Reeves. Mm -hmm. All right. right. That's my personal well, opinion. It'll, it'll be, be protected, though. Oh, yeah. It'll be protected. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's that. But it'll also be interesting to see because we don't know much about, or I don't, anyways, about C Craig Berube and how he, mm -hmm. like, relationship with younger players like that as to how he right. positions them and, or, or I mean, obviously, he has to talk with Brad Trilliving as well uh, to get his uh, his angle on it, too, to say where the direction the team goes with the younger players. But, um, no, it's good to see the – at least we have a couple of good prospects there um, waiting yeah. in the wings, right, So for a change. And, and, there, and, and there's a couple others. I mean, uh, Nikita Gurbu – oh, boy, I can't book <laughs> – Let's call the whole thing off. Um, <laughs> so him uh, and uh, Dennis Hildeby, uh, who played pretty well yesterday. Yeah. Um, I mean, we know the goaltending situation. Um, and if one of them gets hurt, then Matt Murray will be you know, taken out of mothballs and he'll be the, he'll be, I, I don't know. I still don't know what they're going to do with, with Matt Murray in terms of whether he's going to be a third goalie on the roster or they're going to risk what they did last year and wave Martin Jones. If they'll wave Matt Murray, I don't know if anybody's going to pick up Matt Murray sight unseen and you know, will Matt Murray play any games in the preseason. If he plays games and he looks great, then somebody might claim him. And then they would might, they might have to keep him on the roster. But, yeah, yeah, I heard that Murray might be put on waivers. That's and that Hildeby would be the third, uh, the third string goalie. Uh, he'll play with the Marlies most of the season, but if needed, he'll he'll be the the third string to come up uh, and play. But if Murray know. gets if Murray gets claimed, yeah, yeah, if he gets claimed, yeah, yeah. But apparently, he's in fantastic. Like from what we've read, he's in fantastic shape and ready to go. He's so. got two young hips. And yeah, and he obviously has won a Stanley Cup, right? So two Stanley Cups or two Stanley two, Cups, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. So all right, so let's go on. You s we talked a little bit about the left wing position, and there's obviously an issue uh, going into camp. We're kind of thin there, and uh, but the Leafs have the cap issues there right now, about a million dollars over the cap, mm. and. Is there any possibility that Brad Chilliving can make a bigger deal? Like, what's with this? I, I, I want to see a bigger deal here somehow, like to make a bigger, to get a left winger that can score. And mm -hmm. one guy, actually, I know it's not going to happen, but somebody that's not happy, I, I see is with the Detroit Red Wings is Lucas Raymond. I think. Yeah. Well, and Stevie Y is pretty quiet kind of GM there. He doesn't really say too much, but I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but. Yeah, no. I would like, that would be interesting to bring him in to play with another Swede. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking too. Well, there's yeah. there's one there's one name that we haven't mentioned, and 
He's got the same last name as a rather prominent Maple Leaf, and that's Alex Nylander. Right. That's true. So, We've kind of forgotten a little bit about him. Yeah. So, I mean, right now you've got sort of like a shotgun approach when it comes to the Leafs left wing situation. You've got mm -hmm. Nice, you've got McMahon, you've got Pacioretty and Robertson and Connor Dewar and, you know, Pontus Holmberg can play the left side. He did a, a little bit last year. I don't think there's anybody in the mix from the Marlies that are you know, realistic, yeah. but except for Alex Nealanders on an AHL deal and he's going to play preseason games. And, you know, what if he plays with his brother and he looks really good and, you know, he could earn an NHL deal. And then, you know, then he either stays on the team or he has to clear waivers, which, you know, he's been up and down with the American Hockey League with various teams over the last couple of years. But that's another name that's sort of in the mix. Um, yeah. as for, you know, the, and I'm not saying this is as a criticism, what about, the, team, but what about somebody on the Sabres? You cover the Sabres too. Is there, of course, I don't think the Leafs and the Sabres would ever do any kind well, of deal, but say, the last time the Sabres and the, the Leafs made a consequential deal. And I don't think this was really consequential was Dominic Moore for a second round. Mm -hmm. Before right. that, it was, it was Mike Felino. No, sorry. It was the Andrew Chuck Fuhrer deal. Which was Andrew Chuck, a Darren Poopa, and a first round pick, which turned out to be Kenny Janssen for, uh, for Grant Fear, which was, you know, I'll let it, I'll let a secret in. That's the worst trade in my, in my estimation in Buffalo Sabres history. Um, and the other, before that, it was Lou Francis Schetti and Brian Curran for Mike Felino. So you're talking three yeah. trades in, what was that, 34 years? Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. happening. They, they they make more deals with the with the Habs than they do with the Sabers. Um, as for the Lucas Raymond thing, uh, it's a staring contest right now between Eiserman and, and and Raymond's camp. I mean, supposedly they're very close on Mort Sider, who's an, also an RFA, but they're not as close on Raymond. And I think they're trying like a staring contest. Like, okay, you yeah, we got eight million for you. It's like you know, like mm -hmm. it's like one of those deals. So. Um, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Plus it's inside their own division. I mean, I don't really see anything right now. I think what they're going to mm -hmm. do is they're going to play out the season, try to still stay out of LTIR money and then build up, you know, cap accrual toward the deadline. And then if there's somebody out there that they can make a deal for before the deadline, then they'll try that. But I I don't see. I think they're. I think you know. I, I think Matthew Nyes is going to be the number one left winger, which I think is a little bit of a scary proposition. Not because mm -hmm. I don't believe in Matthew Nyes, but he's what twenty two years old, and now all of a sudden he's going to be playing with Matthews. I mean, yeah. it's a lot on his plate. And honestly, I you know I said in the summer I would sign Matthew Nyes to an eight year extension right now because I can just see him score thirty goals playing on Matthews' wing with uh with Mitch Marner. And oh, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, then, you know, he's going to be asking for $7 million a year after one good year. It's like, you yeah, know, I'd like to lock the guy up long term at a reasonable salary before he has the big year. But that's being proactive. A lot of other teams have been proactive, like with that, with their young players. And um, the, the Leafs have not had a history of doing that. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, nice. I mean, Bobby McMahon. I think is a better fit as a third liner, not a second liner. I like his talent. I like his jam. He is not very durable. He's had injury issues over his career. So I think he's a third line guy. That's where like I'm penciling in Robertson as a second line guy if he can play better two way. And maybe Pacioretty is sort of the, you know, golden parachute or disaster plan, you know, like, but I don't know if he can withstand the rigors of playing 16, 17 minutes a night. And maybe it's a, maybe he gets spotted in the top six and then plays further down in the lineup, but there's no real certain answer on the left side. They're overloaded on the right side. And that's yeah. why I keep coming back to, you know, could Nealander play on the left wing or I know Domi can or Marner can. I mean, there's, and I do. You, I'll, I'll throw this back at you. Do you buy this bull crap about Neander playing up the middle? I was 
was just going to ask you about that. Yes. Yeah. Not, like, I, 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 well, I was going to say, what are though, they, gonna, they might do what they did last year where they, they say they're going to do that. He literally, they give game. him like two, <laughs> two games at the most. And then they're like, oh, no, still doesn't work. But what I was going to say was, how about like the whole thing with John Tavares, him mm-hmm. going to the left wing, like that would make sense like that would be a good fit there on the second line that's where i think but, eventually he's going to end up but then yeah. you're weakening it you're you're weakening but then it's your, the middle yeah i mean and whether so, or not so willie so can what do you okay to so say this what are you accomplishing here you're going to move Tavares to the left wing and that's out of position and you're going to move Nylander to center and that's out of position you still have david camp that is your, as your third line center Right. Um, you know, the the whole purpose of moving Nealander to center oh, might be to move. What about uh we're forgetting though, he's a left winger too, Cali Yarncroke, right? He can play both, but he's better on the right side. Oh, he is better on the right side. All yeah. right. Cause uh I mean right right now your right wing and here's the other interesting thing, if I'm not mistaken, Easton Cowan played the right side in the in the rookie game yesterday with Minton yeah. and Grabyonkin. And he played the right wing in London last year. Now he's a left shot. So everybody just know, naturally assumed, Oh, you can just put him on left wing. Well, maybe he's better on the right wing and maybe they don't want to, they like, put him out of position, but he's not making the Maple Leafs as a fourth liner. There's no way. So he's, he's either going to be a top nine playing out of position or he's going to be back in London. So I, you know, the, the, their left wing situation is so up in the air that I, you know, I think it's going to be sort of like piecing a jigsaw puzzle together um, between now and the beginning of the regular season. I don't know. Lots Probably of questions. We should call Stevie Y and see what's, what's up there with Lucas Graham and I'm saying right? he's too quiet down there. He's not all these GMs. They don't like need to have a bit more action with trades. I'm missing the trades from back in the day. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So to our other area of interest, which is uh, talking a little bit about the defense. Uh, so the mystery surrounding the status of Yanni Hockenpah was resolved this week with him signing a one-year deal at $1.4 million. So the Leafs have a lot of D-men now. Um, what do you see as the, as the pairings for opening night? Well, first off, was it? Because I don't know if it was. I mean, we a mystery. It, you mean? <laughs> well, yeah, it's a mystery wrapped up in an enigma. Um, hmm. But okay, so but the first thing that I was curious about was okay, we heard in July. If the insiders reported it, then it was it it was out there. It was true, but that before it wasn't true. Um, it was a two year deal for one point two five million per season. So that's two point five million now. Okay, the deal wasn't registered, so it didn't exist. Um, <laughs> supposedly, they had agreed on a deal, but they didn't want to announce the agreed upon deal. This is very Lou Lamorello of the of the Leafs. They didn't agree upon the. Uh, they didn't announce the deal because they were afraid of an offer sheet to Nick Robertson. I don't buy that. I'm not sure about that. Whatever. But you know that was that was the excuse. So then they announced a one year deal instead of a two year deal. For 1.47 million, which is more than the two year deal in terms of AAV. Okay. First, I ask why the increase? You know, I was like, okay, we don't trust your knee. So we're going to give you an extra $200,000 to take now instead of the two year deal at lesser money. I, I, I don't know. But Brad True Living has not answered the question and probably won't answer the question until Wednesday in the opening of training camp. Okay. Is he healthy to play? Is he healthy to get on the ice? If like all of a sudden they take to the ice because Wednesday usually is medicals and then Thursday is the first day of on ice workouts. If on Thursday he's not on the ice, then I'm wondering what the hell is going on? Because that means probably he's not playing in the preseason and he's not playing and he's going on LTIR and or or you know maybe he's one of these guys that are going to have to limit his ice time because of the this knee injury that he had at the end of the year. I mean we just don't know and that's why I'm like okay, can we depend on Yanni Hockenpah because in theory he's the perfect defenseman for this team because he's big, he's right-handed, he's a good penalty killer. He's like, you know, I wasn't ecstatic about the signing because I've liked him as a defenseman as the type of 
guy. You're not going to spend a ton of money on him and he solves some of the issues. But is he available? And that's what we have to find out. But what yeah. would be the point of them like yeah, that's what I was gonna doing say. this? Like right. Like, do you sign somebody just because you want the LTIR space? Like that doesn't seem no. to make any sense to to be m- going through all of this, you know, jumping through all these hoops to sign a guy that may or may not play for you. Yeah, no, it doesn't because they don't want to go into LTIR because and yeah. I am I'm not a capologist. I'm not like at the at the at the foot of Brandon Pridham alerting all the ins and outs of <laughs> the salary cap. But I do know and I've had it explained to me that you want to avoid going into LTIR at, at all possible at the beginning of the season because if you're not in LTIR at the beginning of the season you start to accrue like basically like daily interest mm-hmm. that you that you're so you're accruing space throughout the year and that's space that you can use at the deadline to acquire a player um that would prevent the Leafs from having to throw extra draft picks to get teams to take and you know to to split half the salary and, you know, they don't have the draft picks to do that. If they want to mortgage their future to 2026 and 2027, I think they'd like to avoid that. Um, but so signing him and putting him on LTIR makes no sense. Um, it only makes sense if he can play. And that will be answered in a couple of days. And what do you see as the pairings then? Do you think, I think. I would well, think R- Riley and Tanif will be yeah, the top pairing, right? That's yeah, an, that's an absolute lock. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean that to me, that's, I mean, that's a lock. And I would think that now, if it was Sheldon Keith coming back, I would think that McCabe and Benoit would be a lock, but not necessarily with with Barube. I mean, he's going to want his own pairings, and he's going to make his own evaluations now you know mike van ryan stayed over from the keefe administration to um Berube's, uh squad and he's in charge of defense and we know that benoit mccabe was a really good pairing better than anybody expected so i would think that they would stay with that group and that would mean that the third pairing is Oliver Ekman Larson and Lilia Grin and or Hockenpah and or Timmons and or Nima. I mean, you know, they're, it's yeah. they're going to keep seven, maybe eight. Um, I think the the seven or the eight will depend on whether they have to keep three goaltenders. Um, it, it makes more sense to be OEL and Lilia Grin. You're not going to sign a guy for three million bucks and then not play him. But maybe Lilligren's the guy they try to trade. And I think there's value out there in terms of, I mean, I think there are teams out there that would trade for Timothy Lilligren, but are you okay with your fallback on the bottom pairing being Hockenpah, Timmons, Nimala? That's mm-hmm. risky. So that's why I think they're going to keep Lilligren. Um, and, you know, again, it depends on Hockenpah's health. And what they're going to do, with Timmons. I mean, they may trade Timmons. So the, again, you think left wing is a is a cluster F. Um, the bottom pairing um, is also a little bit of a confused situation right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, defense obviously come playoff time. It's always good to have the extra yes. defenseman, but I don't know. There's some balance there, I guess, as to the need. We have needs all over the place. Basically, we have needs at. When, as soon as you shift something, you need a, something at center. You shift something else, you need something on the left wing, right? right. And then, yeah, and and yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a little bit of a project, I think, for uh, for Brad Cheer Living as we start the season. But um, yeah, actually, we if you have time, we have yeah. one more question to ask you because we didn't have you on after um, Austin Matthews was named captain. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on? Uh, on Austin Matthews being uh, the 26th captain in Maple Leaf history. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't against it. I mean, when the question came up in 2019, um, I thought Tavares was the better choice. I actually thought like I've always been in the Morgan Riley camp when it came to captaincy because he's been 
here the longest, and I've seen him in the locker room. He is a leader there and well respected. But I understood, you know, Tavares coming off the forty plus goal year, signing the seven year deal. Matthews was coming off that incident in Arizona with the security guard. I mean, it just it wasn't the right time. This is the right time. Now he's starting the the four year deal. He's the highest paid player in the NHL. He's a you know three time Rocket Richard winner. He wants to be a leader. You know, I think he he loves it in Toronto apparently, and I think this is. Uh, a situation where like he wanted it, and I don't think Tavares had a big problem with it. I mean, everybody realizes Tavares is, is going to be transitioning to a different part of his career, whether it's in Toronto or not. I think it'll be in Toronto, depending on what he, um, what you know, he what he w- expects to be paid. But you know, you never know if he wants to be paid more, he might have to go someplace else. But um, I was struck by like the the fact that Tavares was so up front out there saying, you know, I'm good with this. I have no problem with this. You know, I buy that because other, you know, he could just, you know, but he was at the press conference and he was handing over the jersey. He was part of the process. Yeah. So um, I don't think that was like, you know, media created stuff. I don't think that was like spin. I think that was, you know, because Tavares is a leader in that room and he's well respected. He's just not a, he's not a, like a big boisterous leader. Whereas I think Matthews can be because he's put his money where his mouth is. He's the best guy in the, one of the best two or three forwards in the league. And he's got that gravitas and now he's, you know, firmly established in his career and he's in his mid twenties. So I had no problem with it, but I, I don't know how much the captaincy really means anymore. I mean, it may mean it better being something I, I'm I'm hoping that it actually takes him to another level. Obviously, come playoff time. I just think when you're a captain, you you got to take the team on your back and just say, screw it. <laughs> like, we got to right. get this done and get this past the second round of the playoffs. Like, but, sorry. But, but do you. OK, let's let's just factor this in. What do you want? Matthews to do to step it up another level. I mean, I don't want him taking a run at Brad Marchand, like no, or, no. or or Ridley Gregg, like 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 uh, Morgan Riley did. I mean, yeah, you want him to score more goals, but I think he was going to try to score more goals even if he was or wasn't the captain. That's why I'm saying I don't know how much it really factors in. Like, I think that the, I think that the the meaning of the C now is not what the C was 25 years ago. It's not even in Toronto? Not in, <laughs> as Okay, as as a spokesman. As it a, means something to us <laughs> well, as no, fans. Well, I mean, uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. okay, I mean. But maybe I'm, that's the thing. It means more to, more to fans right, than, than right. it actually makes a difference in, on the team. I mean, you know, I'll go, I'll go into well-traveled territory when it comes to me. Matt Sundin becoming captain did not behoove the Toronto Maple Leafs. In 2000, they had to go out and sign Gary Roberts and Shane Corson to be assistant captains. Why? I mean, Matt Sundin was respected in the room. He's a great player, but he wasn't a vocal leader. Just like John Tavares. John Tavares is not a vocal leader. Maybe, you know, in the locker room, maybe he is, but he, you know, they had to bring in leaders to help Matt Sundin be a leader. Now, maybe that's not the case with Matthews. Maybe he, you know, he's going to be rah rah sis boom ba. Okay, I mean that may help a little bit, but I don't think the lack of a strong willed, you know, leader captain was the different was the reason why this team hasn't won over the last few years. The reason this team hasn't won over the last few years is because their defense wasn't good enough. They didn't have enough scoring and their goaltending when it came down to it at the time of the year sucked. And you know, now we didn't talk about goaltending, but this season is going to ride on two things, the health of Joseph wall, and whether Anthony Stellars was a creation of the Florida Panthers uh, Stanley Cup qual- quality defense or or not. And I have doubts about Stellars. They don't. 
I mean, he had like a 930 save percentage and a ridiculous winning percentage and, you know, great. But that was with, you know, Ekblad and Montour and, you know, they had their, and, and a team that played good team defense. Purportedly, this Leaf team is going to be, is going to be better defensively. We hope because if they are, then it'll be a similar, a similar story, but we don't know that. And if they need the goaltender to stand on his head, I don't expect Anthony Stolarz to be doing, you know, huzzas and handsprings. Joseph yeah. Wall is a really good goaltender, but is he going to stay healthy? And then you've got, you know, the human injury, Matt Murray as your number three. Yeah. The well, Sergei Bobrovsky gave gave Anthony Stolarz a, a vote of confidence the other day, saying that he's just a, a great, great. He's playing for the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what I thought. No. Uh, never, never mind. I mean, all these comments from fo- other team players like McKinnon on Marner, yeah. and McDavid on Matthews. Yeah. I just think that's ridiculous. I love Linus Olmark said Jeremy Swayman. It's like, you know, of course. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah because Linus Olmark getting traded to Ottawa put probably an extra couple th- or $3 million a year in the, into Jeremy Swayman's pocket. <laughs> you know, it's like, of course you're going to love him. It's your best buddy we give hugs to after every game. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I expect, I would expect, unless he was a complete jerk for Bobrovsky to, to, to <laughs> give Stolarz a, but they had they they had to walk away from him because Spencer Knight, they're paying him four million bucks. They need him to be the backup, at least to play in the NHL to start to wean Bobrovsky away from playing as many games as he has. You know, I'm just saying, I'm not a Stolarz has to make a believer out of me. I mean, I think that this team, if they're going to be top three in the Atlantic Division, will need Joseph Wall to play probably. 50 to 55 games. If it's a 50 50 split and Anthony Stolarz is playing 41 games, I'm not saying that they're not going to make the playoffs, but I think that's a disaster because that means Wall may have gotten hurt. And that means that they're playing Stolarz a lot more. He, remember, his career high is 27 games. Mm-hmm. There's a reason for that. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully, hopefully the, it all get well. It will get sorted out as the season goes along. We have eighty two games, right? So, yes, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be back. Oh, by definitely. By game fifteen or twenty. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, so we managed to cover everything. I think even the goaltending. So we thank Mike once again for being a guest with us. And as he just mentioned, you will be able to hear him here throughout the season as our Ladies Talking Leafs insider. Uh, You can check out Mike's Leafs blog on HockeyBuzz.com. He's also co-host of the Leafs Convo podcast and Off the Post Radio covering the NHL. And you can find both shows on YouTube. And if you don't follow him on X, make sure you do. He's at Mike in Buffalo. That's his handle. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Always a pleasure. All right. So thank you to Mike uh, for coming on the show again. It was, uh, he had some great, great tidbits of uh, mm-hmm. information. He didn't fall for my Lucas Raymond uh, trade. No, uh, no trade but I, possibility. <laughs> I did like that idea though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was, I don't know. Somehow it's, it, something's got to happen um, mm-hmm. with the whole, like, we're, we're missing pieces everywhere a little bit. If you move, like we said with Mike, if you move one player, then there's an opening in another position sort of thing. Right. So I think personally, you got, I think it has to happen on defense, like that something, whether it be Connor Timmons, like he's saying, I know he's a right shot defenseman, but then that should, that should bring back more for us. Mm-hmm. Like something, something back package him with somebody. And, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, and it yeah. was interesting. His, um, his, I guess thoughts on the, on the goaltending at the end Mm -hmm. there. He, um, he mentioned about Matt Murray and whether or not he might be in the picture, but uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. 
<laughs> well, there's just, like you said, a lot of question marks, and I don't know if preseason is really long enough to answer them all. Um, anyway, there's no announcement yet on the official start of camp, but it's definitely going to be this week. And the first preseason, preseason game will be on Sunday, September 22nd versus the Sens. Then they have a couple of games versus the Habs on the 26th and the 28th. And I believe... Uh, their golf tournament is going to be held tomorrow at Rattlesnake uh, Golf Club here in the lovely city of Milton. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be tomorrow on the, yep. so tomorrow's what? The 16th. 16th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That'll, that'll be fun. The weather's fantastic here in Toronto. So mm-hmm. that'll be good. Yep. Yeah. So we're excited though, to get going and for the guys to get back on the ice. Um, don't forget, we will be going weekly um, for the upcoming regular season. Uh, hit that follow button or subscribe button, wherever you listen to our show. At the same time, please consider leaving us a rating or review. It's really easy. Uh, it's Apple or Spotify. You can even just hit the five star button. <laughs> right? If you, yes, that's always quick. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's important for our show to get recognized as a source for Leafs content. And we always thank you for taking the time. And another way to help us out is by visiting our Kofi page at Kofi.com. You can follow us there. And if you choose to, you can support us by buying us a coffee. Any donation goes towards helping us produce the show and making it even better for you. So you can find the link to our Kofi page on our show notes or in any of our social media profile pages. And as always, we thank our healthcare workers and first responders for everything that they do. We thank you as always for listening and watching Ladies Talking Leafs presented by Bet Online. Till next go time, leaves go. Go, go Leafs, go. Leafs go. Do you believe?